safe and prosperous future they deserve while letting our seniors live out their golden years with dignity. Let's get to work. Now again, Hobbs, who is Arizona's Secretary of State, rose to prominence as, again, a defender of the legitimacy of the last election and warned that her Republican rival, former television news anchor Carrie Lake, would be an agent of chaos. So Hobbs' victory does add a little further evidence that Trump is weighing down his allies in crucial battleground states as the former president gears up for an announcement of a 2024 presidential run. Now, there is an announcement that's set to be made by former President Donald Trump later here this evening. That is set to take place from his Mar-a-Lago club in Palm Beach, Florida. That's set to take place at 9 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. for those watching with us in Arizona and 6 p.m. for those of you on the West, on the West Coast. We'll be bringing that to you uh, later this evening. But you can see here, uh, as we are waiting for Hobbs to step out and make remarks, there's uh, many supporters who are here ready to hear from the newly elected governor. Live now from Fox, going to continue to keep an eye right here uh, for you as we're going to be waiting for her to step out. We are hearing that remarks are going to be coming at about a quarter past the hour. So we'll continue to keep this up and on your screen here for you. So as soon as she does step out, we can take it live raw and in full for you here on live now from Fox. But I do want to let our viewers know uh, what else is going to be coming up here today. So we've had a bit of content already coming in from Capitol Hill as new members of both uh, um, the House and the Senate are being welcomed. So we did have uh, Senator Mitch McConnell taking some photographs with some of their new members. And uh, again, the uh, balance of power for the House still up for grabs. Uh, so we are going to continue to watch that. We did hear from some House Democrats earlier here today speaking about uh, how they're going to continue to try to work on Capitol Hill as this uh, still is a little bit uh, in the balance. Uh, we also have been keeping a close eye on Wisconsin where we're back inside of that Waukesha courtroom. Today has been the sentencing hearing day one. It is scheduled to take place today and tomorrow for Daryl Brooks. Again, he has been found guilty by a jury for his actions during a Waukesha Christmas parade, which took the lives of six people and injured more than 60 others. Some of those uh, victims' impact statements already being given this morning have been very emotional. Uh, even families uh, who have been speaking out have had a hard time sometimes getting out the words. And Daryl Brooks himself, as we've been watching, uh, sometimes not being re very respectful to those statements being made, rolling his eyes and not paying attention, reading his uh, book that he's brought along with him. Again, he has been representing himself during this entire uh, trial. And it has been an interesting one at that. This is going to be uh, the two-day sentencing for him, as he is also expected to have some people uh, speak on his behalf as well. So we'll be going back into that Waukesha courtroom a little bit later here for you on Live Now from Fox. Uh, but what I want to do while we're uh, continuing to uh, wait for Katie Hobbs, again, we do have that live picture. Uh, we do have the uh, uh, re-elected Senator Mark Kelly speaking uh, with some fellow Democratic senators. So let's go ahead and bring those remarks to you live right here on Live Now from Fox. Being successful in 2020, uh, but uh, Gary, uh, over the last couple of years, and of course, uh, Senator Schumer, um, who has uh, worked incredibly hard to help all of us up here today be successful. Um, I think after a tough election, it can be tempting to focus on the things that divide us. Uh, I think we've all experienced this especially when you're running for election or re-election. Um, but we've also seen the consequences um, that come when leaders refuse to accept the truth and focus more on conspiracies of the past than solving the challenges we face. In Arizona, we've seen a lot of that over the last uh, couple of years. And we've got challenges in front of us. I spent a lot of my time flying a little airplane around the state of Arizona so I can get to all corners rather quickly, um, reduce the amount of time I spend in the car. That also means that, you know, folks like Senator Schumer can't call me because <laughs> I'm in the airplane. Um, hey, oh, oh, right. uh, um, but, you know, folks are really struggling. I mean, high costs, uh, you know, for families. Our border in Arizona is still a mess, needs to be addressed. You know, we need comprehensive immigration reform. It's incredibly important for our state, but also for the country. We've, we've got tens of thousands of dreamers in Arizona, uh, you know, who I look at as, as as American as my own two kids. Uh, we've got a drought in the West, Catherine and Michael and I, and 
you know, we share this, uh, you know, the upper and lower basin states of the Colorado River, we have to solve this problem. A lot of our food comes from um, the Southwest and it's important to our food supply. We've got this historic drought. I mean, there's so many issues and I'm convinced the best way to solve these is by working together. We, sh we demonstrated that. The, the CHIPS Act, the infrastructure bill, veterans health care, postal reform, gun safety legislation, all came um, in a bipartisan way. And I think we get better solutions when we work together. So I'm looking forward to continuing this work for the state of Arizona. Um, it's been the honor of my life to serve in the United States Senate. I spent 25 years in the Navy. Um, and obviously my naval service was, has been very important to me and also my service at NASA. But the impact that this Senate over the last two years had on the American people and the future of this country cannot be overstated. It was significant. And I look forward to doing more of that. Thank you. All right, so once again, we just heard some remarks from the Arizona Senator Mark Kelly. He uh, speaking as we're waiting for the Democratic uh, governor, uh, Katie Hobbs, to deliver some remarks after uh, the race was called just yesterday for Arizona's governor race. Live now from Fox, going to send some viewers out to a two-minute break. We'll be right back here in these events when you return. Uh, I'll, I'll answer that for us. Women's reproductive rights...
All right, so we've been listening in here uh, live on Capitol Hill as Democratic uh, Senatorial Campaign Committee members were speaking. Uh, again, we are still waiting for the newly elected governor, Katie Hobbs. They called the race just last night. She's uh, going to be giving some remarks. We're hearing it could happen here in the next few minutes. So let's go ahead. We're going to quickly get in our second two minute break here and when we come back if she hasn't stepped out to the podium we'll continue listening into more press conferences from all across the country while we wait for Governor Hobbs to make some remarks from Arizona. Janet Napolitano from 2006. Now, uh, she again uh, was uh, just declared governor last night. Uh, so we will continue to watch this shot here as it looks like uh, we're starting to have her step out here. Let's go ahead and just listen in and get a little feel of the energy happening in this room. All right, so it looks like a lot of people cheering and getting excited, those cell phones and the signs, uh, all in support for Katie Hobbs being raised into the air. And again, she'll be giving some remarks for the very first time here as governor of Arizona, this race being declared just last night. Live now from Fox was right on top of it as soon as it was being reported. And we're gonna continue to do that uh, with all of these other races that have been tight. Uh, so let's go ahead and listen into the very first speaker right here on Live Now from Fox. Okay celebrating someone that I have look up, looked up to my whole life. Over the last year and a half, I've seen my mom give this campaign her all. She's the strongest woman that I know, and she's constantly teaching me that through hard work and perseverance, I can achieve anything that I put my mind to. Every time I look at where she's at now, I am amazed to see how far she's come. I can barely remember a time before she got involved into politics and has actively worked to make the community around her a better and brighter place to be. It's amazing to see the leap from just a few people going door to door, asking for people to listen and to help her make a difference to everyone who is standing here supporting her today. So without further ado, please help me welcome Arizona's next governor, my mom, Katie Hobbs. Arizona. 
was officially called, and I am honored to stand before you as Governor-elect Katie Hobbs. I also want to congratulate Senator Mark Kelly on his reelection. And I'm thrilled to know that I will be handing the keys of the Secretary of State's office to Adrian Fontes. It has been a long year and a half. But in this election, Arizonans chose solving our problems over conspiracy theories. We chose sanity over chaos. And we chose unity over division. We chose a better Arizona. And we chose democracy, the system of government that made America the best and most prosperous country in the history of the world. But the attacks on democracy won't end today with this victory. And so it is on all of us to continue to defend it. Most of all, we must reject the false choice between standing up for democracy and standing up for an economy that works for everyone. We must reject the false choice between standing up for democracy and standing up for a woman's right to keep the government out of her personal health care decisions. And we must reject the false choice between standing up for democracy and fighting for a school system that has the resources it needs, has teachers in every classroom, and prepares our kids for tomorrow. Because without democracy, the people don't have a say, and all of our problems get dramatically worse. So today is a good day for Arizona. And it's a good day for democracy. We can all take a big sigh of relief, but the work goes on. I want to thank the voters of Arizona for entrusting me with this immense responsibility. It is truly the honor of a lifetime, and I will do everything in my power to make you proud. I want to thank my family, our volunteers, and campaign staff. Without all of your hard work, passion, and sacrifice, this day would not be possible. Thank you all from the bottom of my heart. For those Arizonans who didn't vote for me, know that I will work just as hard for you. Because, because even in this moment of division, I believe there is so much more that connects us. We all want lower costs, safer streets, a secure border, better schools, and water for generations to come. This was not just about an election. It was about moving this state forward and dealing with the challenges of our generation and giving our kids the safe and prosperous future they deserve while letting our seniors live out their golden years with dignity. Yeah. I was born and raised in Arizona. I know what it's like to grow up in a working class family just trying to make ends meet. I know what it's like to have to pick up a second job to provide for your family. And you deserve a governor who understands the challenges you face while also knowing how to tackle them head on. We started this campaign by talking about getting the job done, even in the face of immense challenges. That's what I'll do as your governor, because that is what you and your family do every day, stretching your paychecks even further as costs soar and making sure you get your kids to and from school as gas prices skyrocket. You continue to cast your ballots, even as our democracy has continued to face unprecedented attacks. That's what Arizonans do. We persevere in the face of challenges. And as your governor, I will do everything in my power to get the job done for you, and your, for you and your family, even under difficult circumstances. Rising costs on housing and groceries, homelessness, a water crisis, a border crisis, and women's reproductive freedom facing the most serious attack in generations. These problems are urgent, and it's going to take both parties working together to fix them. As your governor, I will work with both Republicans and Democrats, and together we'll put more money back in your pockets. We'll invest in our public schools, public schools. We'll provide our border communities with the resources they need to keep Arizona safe. 
We'll make it easier to get to go to trade schools and we'll pr prioritize education so our state's workforce is built for the jobs of the future. Just like we did with the Secretary of State's office, we'll make state government more transparent, accountable, and responsive to you. We'll work to make Arizona a hub for business and entrepreneurship. We'll create economic opportunity for all Arizonans and build better educational opportunities for STEM jobs and apprenticeships, and apprenticeships for those who don't get a four-year degree. It's time to secure and modernize Arizona's water supply by better conserving and managing our water and upgrading our infrastructure. It's time to hold corporations accountable who want to give our water away to foreign governments like Saudi Arabia. Because we need that water here for our families and businesses. And as soon as my term begins, I will do everything in my power to repeal the draconian 1864 abortion ban. <laughs> that puts so many women's lives at risk. I will use every tool at my disposal to restore the reproductive rights that we've been guaranteed for the last 50 years. A woman's medical decision should be between her and her doctor. Yeah. To my colleagues in the legislature, we must work together to solve our urgent problems. Republicans and Democrats will have an open door to my office so we can get to work, find bipartisan compromise, and deliver for the people of Arizona. But for those of you who prefer to obstruct, spread misinformation, and continue to pursue an extreme agenda out of touch with this state, take note of the results of this election. The voters sent us a loud and clear message. They rejected the chaos because we have urgent problems and they need and expect all of us to deliver. So let's roll up our sleeves and get to work. Arizona, as I've said before, we've been through a thing or two these last few years, but we are tough. This state is tough. And if we work together, we can tackle our biggest challenges. Yeah. Let's get to work. Thank you so much. Governor-elect Katie Hobbs here delivering some remarks to supporters in Arizona after being declared the winner of the governor's race just yesterday that was uh, called and live now from Fox, not only bringing you that news as soon as it happened, but also bringing you this press conference live, raw and unfiltered. We'll continue to follow uh, more remarks made by Arizona leaders if uh, they do have anything else to add or to say about this uh, latest race being called. Live now from Fox is gonna continue to uh, keep our eyes on Capitol Hill as well, uh, just since we do have so many new members who have been elected into uh, Congress uh, who will be possibly speaking. We have uh, some microphones and posts even set up uh, inside of uh, 